This podcast provides a platform that will share many different points of views that should empower you, uplift you, make you want to go out and do right. When you hear the term still a man, say, yes, I am. Still a man. Yes, I am. Still a man. Yes, I am. Let's go. What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of the Still a Man podcast. Tonight's topic is dealing with death. Now, of course, you know this is a uh, this is a taboo topic, a terrible topic. People don't want to talk about it. It's a dreaded, dark discussion. But we're gonna go ahead and touch it. Um, so one of the panel members said they wanted to discuss uh, death uh, for whatever reason. They're uh, not present currently. He actually just joined. I oh, just come. Okay. Um. So as I was saying, they asked to talk about it and hopefully this <coughs> will help a number of individuals deal with this, uh, like I said, uh, taboo topic. All right, so again, dealing with death. Now, you guys can approach this in several different ways. Um, the professionals say it could be split into two groups or two topics, why and how. Uh, why has this happened? Um, why did uh, I not do anything to prevent this from happening? And why has God allowed this to uh, occur? And the hows, how am I gonna get over this? How long is this gonna take for me to recover from this? And um, how do I move on? How do I go on with my life? How do I live with the loss of this loved one? All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about it. So all of us, if you live long enough, you're going to lose someone near and dear to you. And unfortunately, death and grief, <sighs> it's a process. Of course, death happens first, and then you, you grieve. Well, actually, I can, that's, I can, I'm going to contradict myself because sometimes people grieve before the death actually takes place because uh, they don't know how to deal with the whole idea of the person um, dying. So some of them start uh, missing an individual before they even um, leave this world. So grief does not have expiration date. Um, if, if you've ever experienced uh, dealing with death, then you know that. Uh, oh. Some people, it may last for a month. Some people, it might last for a year. And some people, it might take them a lifetime. And some people, they just never really get over it. But like I said, hopefully the things we talk about, the things we share yeah. tonight, it'll be able to help uh, somebody um, <laughs> deal with it better. All right, um, Timmy, let's some go to you people, first. Some people, it drives them to, to their death because the person, as you seen with, with, with uh, Bobby Christina, how she took Whitney's death. And then you can just see that she is out of control, she is reckless, and it was only a matter of time before something was gonna happen to her, where either that dude, Nick, was gonna end up killing her, or what happened, happened to her, she was gonna OD. 
and, and that came from her, you know, not being able to handle her mother's death and then, you know, indulging, trying to, you know, trying to get rid of the pain by drugging, drinking and stuff like that. And when, when you when you are on that type of time trying to suppress your grief, then that's when bad things always happen because you're not you're not thinking straight. You're thinking I'm I'm trying to get rid of this pain. And that's how people accidentally kill themselves. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, let's go to Patsy. Patsy, you got anything to share? Yeah. Um, I my mother did pass away, so I've had my good days, my bad days. But that first year was like really the hottest, and then. You know, I just kept more of a positive outlook on stuff. You know, not that I ignored the grief. I dealt with it. I would ever walk through the grief. But I, I you know, when I, I'm kind of thinking, I've thought of my mom, I was reinforced my, my thinking. And I talked to myself in my head and it's like, my mother was a perfect mom, but she was a good mom. And even at that grief wheel, it come for some uh well from my personal experience, and I'm quite sure other people have probably like went through it the process like I have. Like it the, the grief kind of comes and goes as it is. And I didn't ignore it, I just dealt with it as it is and um, like there was one particular year, anniversary year that, um, from just before the 20th anniversary, from like the holidays just before that, up until like the actual end of her, her 20th anniversary death, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of struggled with it and I just kind of like dealt with the grief in my own way, you know. I didn't really talk about it until after after um that actual anniversary date. Then and to just to lay like my therapist know like this is what's gonna be going on the last That's year. What I was getting ready to say. That's what I was getting ready to say. Uh, like I talked about it after the fact, you know, but I didn't wanna I kinda wanna Wanted to go through it in my own way without somebody feeding back to me like something that I I want to emotionally and mentally go through more on my own, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's where I was in my in my head, but I always tell myself so. My mom was not perfect, but she was a good mom for being a single parent. She did the best that she could. And I know in my heart, my mother loved all of us as her kids. You know, so I I I think of her in that perspective and I keep a good outlook on who she was as a person when she was living mm -hmm. and not so much on how she died. She died of a heart attack my, and my brother was there with with her when she passed. Where I just think about what kind of person she was raising me, my sister, my brother and what she did and you know, and she tried to help other people and this and that. She she was a tough cookie, but she was a good cookie. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's pretty much how I dealt with my, well, specifically grief over my mom, you know, because I know she loved us to death and we loved her. 
you know, so yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Bird, you got anything to add to this? Um, what do you know about death? Um, and if so, how did you deal with it if you endured it? I think he stepped out. All right, we can go to Robert next then. Ugh. So if this if, if this is a touchy topic for anybody, let me just go ahead and say uh feel free to um log out yeah, and log awesome. back in. But um I'm gonna go to you, Robert. Um so what 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 advice can you give uh anyone in regards to dealing with death? You um you really got to first first remember all the good times you was privileged to have with your lost one. Hold that dear to your memory bank. Um try to think of all good times more than the bad. I would tell you so if if you're gonna ever get through something like that because I start off this way come the beginning of the year January bring the new year I'm in pain following that I know that there was a Valentine's Day for him and um he would have been spreading his love to maybe his lady or whom he wanted to then we move on to Easter, which will be a holiday that I would had, you know, the pleasure of sharing with my son along with the family members. Then we move on to his birthday. Then we go into, you know, you got the summer. Summer days I cry. Just the thought of how he would have been enjoying the weather. Um, We move on to the 4th of July cook-off of a holiday. Then you go into August, if we was going camping, if he wanted to or not. I think of, you know, the beginning of fall. I think of October, my birthday. Well, I'm here. Happy birthday no more. I think of, oh. Thanksgiving. Christmas. And so on that you don't have those days no more. And you watch a lot of your friends and family members that still have the pleasure of having that moment, not only with their son, you know, because that's where I miss, you know, the most that I have my daughter and love her, but I watch other people with their sons. And it kind of tears me apart on those days. But how I get through is thinking of what I had, the times I had with them. And I I talk to many people that is in pain. And when I'm able to put a smile on their face, it, it, it warms my heart. It helps me smile. And, and I think to myself, God has me here still for a reason because I'm able to help others and others turn to me and say, wow, you're so um, strong and they find that amazing. And that lifts my spirits. And I work through all what is his legacy. And that's all for the short part of what I tell you guys, how I cope with it. But pain never goes. You just learn how to deal with it. It's still very fresh. You can go to bed to it and wake up to it, but it's how you you learn to live with the pain. Well said, well said. Thank you for sharing. Um, I know this is like uh, traumatic. And again, you know, we're gonna get through this. This is a topic, like I said, it's, it's, it's a taboo topic. A lot of people don't wanna talk about it. We're going to touch it and we're going to 
hopefully our testimonies uh, will be uh, what someone else needs to get through uh, their situation or a pending situation. Tanya, um, have you ever had to deal with uh, death? Uh, and how? Did, if so, how did you um, deal with it? I've dealt with um, different forms of death. And what I mean by that, I've dealt with the death of my innocence. Mm -hmm. When I was molested as a child, mm -hmm. they sent me on a whole nother path. I've dealt with the, the death of um, love from my parents. Mm -hmm. um, and I've dealt with the death of love from uh, the death of my grandmother, who was very important to me, um, and, and my mother. And the way that those deaths happened, um, God kind of prepared me for, for my grandmother and my grandfather. I, I tend, he tends to send me signals when someone in my family that was I was close to and that, um, that I had love for, he sent me signals um, and get premonitions of, of them passing. Um, so that I'm, I can kind of deal with it a, a little bit, but some of the circumstances, like when my grandmother passed away, I was homeless and I couldn't go to her funeral. And she was one of, she was the most important woman, you know, even before my mother, because my mother wasn't always there for me, but my grandmother, my grandmother took good care of me and she taught me a lot about life. And how I honor her is just remembering those things that she taught me and passing them on to my children. Um, and just learning from the lessons of sitting back and thinking about why did what she taught me and why he took her allowed me to move on to the next level in my life. Like if my grandmother was still alive, I probably would still be in Ohio. And that would have been an interruption in the path that God had for me. He meant for me to be in Boston. He meant for me to go through the things that I went through. And so I had the, the things that she taught me, I had to use that wisdom to help me get through some oh of the trials and tribulations that I experienced in my life um, since, her, since her passing. It brought me back to a relationship with the Lord you know, and, and when my mother passed, I didn't get to say, we, we reconciled, but I didn't get to say bye to her. I knew that my mother was going to pass, um, Mother's Day. I had told my husband that this is the last Mother's Day I'm going to get to spend with my mom. I don't feel like she'll be here after Mother's Day, but the way that she passes away, I didn't expect her to pass. She passed suddenly after we left a funeral and I couldn't even get home fast enough to get my clothes off before my cousin was calling me and telling me that I had to get to the hospital. I had to pull the plug on my mother. Oh. And that's still for, hard for me to even have to comprehend that I didn't even get to say bye. I was looking forward to us having some more time together since we reconciled. But he, he took her, I'm not gonna say he took her. She had to, she, she passed. And I had to deal with her passing as well as my illness. Cause that happened, her passing happened right after what happened to me a few months later. So I, everything was piled on me at one time. And through all of that, I had to learn how to be resilient. I had to lean heavy on my relationship with God. I had to lean heavy on my relationship with him. But because of all of that, it allowed other things to happen in my life. It allowed other relationships to be healed in, in my life. So what I do to to honor their memory 
like I said, with my grandmother, I take the things that she taught me, the wisdom she instilled in me, I pass it on to, to whoever I can pass it on to. And with my mother, how I deal with her, her is that I think about the things that we used, I watched programs on TV that we used to love to watch together. She would be at home. If we're not together, she would be at home watching it. We'd be calling each other on the phone, um, talking about it. I go do some of the things that we used to do together when she was uh, when she was alive, like going to bingo or going to the casino or uh, just spending time with one another. I do that in, in her honor. And just having a relationship with Christ that 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 I can have someone I can lean to and I can talk to and who understands my pain and can give me the peace that surpasses to help me deal. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. As I said, this is a very, you know, like traumatic topic and you know, dreaded discussion, but you know, I appreciate you guys sharing this hot, these heartfelt stories. You know, we're gonna again, we're gonna get through this, and God willing, <coughs> this is going to strengthen someone else in their journey. Your testimony will provide that much needed strength uh, for them. Uh, Elijah, have you had uh, dealing with death, and if so? How did you deal with it and what advice could you offer to others? I think he stepped away too. Okay. Well, we'll Joe sure. and Gino are here too. Hey, okay. Kiana. All right. Kiana? Thank you, ladies. Um, turn your mics on so you can um, um, share. All right, so we said Josie, Kiana, and Gina just joined. Yeah, I, I've been, been here. here for a minute. All right, all right. Um, welcome, ladies. Uh, so again, we're talking about dealing with death. Um, Robert, Timmy, Patsy, Tanya, they all shared. Um, you know, Sharon is caring. Um, let's see. Would you guys like to share, Gina? Let's go to you first. Um, have you ever had any dealings with death, and if so? How did you deal with it? And uh, what advice could you give to others that may be uh, dealing with it currently? Um, yes, I have dealt with death. Um, my first, the first time, well, the first time me knowing about like someone that, you know, died was my father. Um, I never knew my dad, but um, still dealing with the fact that he's that he wasn't here and he was taken from me. Um, I still work through even till this day. You know, I would think about how how different my life would be, how I would de um, deal with men differently. You know, um, if my father was still here, so. I know when I was younger, I used to cry a lot, even though I didn't know my dad, like I used to, it, affect, it affected me a lot when I was younger. Um, and my grandmother, not my father's mother, but my mother's mother, she's a, she, she's an old Southern woman, but when I used to cry, she was like, why are you crying over that man? You didn't even know that man, you know? But she, was ignorant to that to to how it affected me and how much I wanted my dad in my life. Um, the next was my brother. Um, my brother, it, and that and that affects affects me every day um, because I feel like. I feel like there's no greater pain than, in my opinion, than a parent losing a child. Like, so my mom, she 
she works through, she, she she works through it every day and like robert said you know it never gets better you just you just learn how to cope with it every day so um my mother she's never been the same she never looks the same she all she knows like i can see in her eyes you know that she's not the same person because she's lost a child you know so um that affect me not to mention, not to mention her baby's father you know exactly. that there was a, a, a real shocker to her you know it was i was yeah. there me dave robert dominic we were down there when that when y'all was in her belly at that time, you and G, uh, you and Jetta was in her belly when she <laughs> found out yeah, that the exactly. past your dad passed. We were there. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is, um, my dad passed away March. Well, I don't like to say passed away because it is what it is. He was murdered was March seventh, right? March seventh. Y'all was, and you know what? I I was like, it was a blessing. That y'all we were born, born on, on, on his, his birthday. birthday. That but was the blessing. Jerome's birthday was literally the next day after my father was murdered. The eighth. And then the eighth. And Jerome is no longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a double. So, too. Yeah. So it's like it's real, it's it's losing losing those two people men in my life has molded me into the person I am today. I feel like now that my I have three I have three brothers. Jerome passed away. My one the tw the twins, one is in jail for a very long time and then one is out. So I feel like me not having my all my brothers, I feel like men kind of like they kind of try me because they know. You know what I'm saying? But that's another story. But um, but those let them try you until they gotta find out. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So like they they, I feel like losing my brother, honestly, and I feel like God speaks to you in so many different ways, you know. Because I don't want to you. Hold on. Because the day my brother died, you know, I woke up. I was brought enough to get. I was working at um, I was working on Newberry Street, and um, I woke up. I got in the shower, and just I felt like the Holy Spirit just came over me. I was I was crying, and I did not know why. I I started praying for my for all my family. I started naming everybody in my family, my immediate family, and I just if you ever felt like if you ever felt the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm talking about. Like, it's just, it's, it's not controllable. You can't control it. And all you can do is cry and then praise God and, and then thank God. And then just, just keep, just, just, uh, it's, it's nothing you can do about it. So later on that day, not even like 10 o'clock at 10 o'clock, that's when I found out that my brother was gone. So I feel like God was trying to prepare me for, you know, um, I say the first couple, the first maybe five years, I used to have dreams about him, you know, and the last dream I had about him, you know, it was that he was at peace. You know, he came to me. He just said, I'm just I'm sorry I can't be here with you guys, but um, I just want to make sure y'all good. I love you guys and I'm going to go now. And that's the last dream I had about him. And I was like year five of him being gone mm. um, so i i think everybody deals with um, um death differently mm -hmm. you know yeah, there's yeah. no wrong there's no wrong way of dealing with death mm -hmm. but one thing about it is once you have your family your family even though you might not talk to them or see them every day but when you have your family there and you have people that support you and love you you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying that makes it so much I wouldn't say easier. It makes it more more palatable, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, just, it gives you strength. Yeah, you know. And Robert, I just I always want to tell you, I'm so sorry for what happened to you. And yeah, and 
just ruins your family anyway, but you're stuck. You know? Yeah, whatever. I'm sorry. I'm just that's no. hard to get. No, we just gotta show each other want... love and support. That's all. Yeah. He was a joy. Yes. Um when I miss when I miss Bobby, I just think about the times that we had and and, and his laughter. His yeah. laughter it just warms your heart. And that always put a smile on my face. Yeah. Because yes. like sometimes those fun times, those funny times, like I know my mother was like a like a prankster and, and stuff, you know, sometimes because I remember before my mother died the year before. Like, we kind of pranked my brother with the birthday cake, and I brought some um, sexual stuff to put on the cake, and because oh, he just turned 18, my, my, my mother had the idea, but I just went and got the stuff to do it, and my brother was like, I know you're going to do that, da, 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 da. you know, it's like, <laughs> with him and his face turned beat red, but it was just like, some. Oh, Funny times you gotta remember. Just some honorable mentions, like obviously my 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 um my grandmother, you know, my uncle Mucci, Uncle Dominic, like those are all things that have affected me and will continue to affect me. But yes, you know, I work I try my best to live life as best as I can and deal with it. The, the right way instead of being angry. Those honor, honorable mentions you just mentioned always always have you laughing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially my uncle Muchi. My uncle Muchi, like he was the closest uncle I've had. Like he called me. None of my uncles called me, but Uncle Muchi. The only person that would check up on me and my sister consistently was my uncle Muchi. <laughs> Even on my, even not, not even my uncles on my mom's side. He was very, he was always calling me, seeing how I'm doing and everything. And I'll be, you know, they're here, there, whatever, you know, but he always would be like, how you doing? I spent a whole uh, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes talking on the phone, just, just making sure I'm okay. The things that you learned about the, uh, the dead once they're gone. And, you know, sometimes people, they they feel like that um those people didn't mean that much to the world, but they don't know the people who they affected positively, um and how much they meant to those individuals. How did did it meant the world to those individuals that those people were amongst the world, um to put smiles on their face. Josie, you um got anything to share? Yeah, um, I was just listening to everybody. Um, Gina, your pops, <laughs> your pops was a troublemaker when I used to come down here to Auntie Alice's house. You guys told me. He always used to, you know, he, but he was, he was my cousin, you know, he was my bigger cousin. So when he left us, that hurted me. Um, my oldest sister left us, that hurt me. And these are all deaths at a young age when I was young still, but it still affected me. As I grew up, um, my grandmother, my grandfather, my uncles, my aunt, my aunts. Um, Auntie Dati's passing was very sudden to me and I didn't, you know, I didn't really handle that well. Um, Ma, Mom's passing, Gina, when you say someone, I have never really had any type of real, you know, interactions with the people who's gone. However, I do remember one morning I woke up and I was thinking about mom and I woke up. And when I woke up, I don't know, for some reason, my attention was to the screw in the wall. And I was like, what the hell is this screw in the wall? And I was like, next thing you know, I heard the smoke detector. And I'm like, what the hell is this detector going off for? It's probably just, you know, it always went off. 
But this in particular morning, I don't know why, but I say to this day, mom woke me up. And when I opened up that door, smoke hit me. And I was like, oh shit, it's a real fire. I always say that was mom coming to me, telling me to get the hell out this building. You know what I mean? But the deaf, those are all deaths, either sicknesses or, you know, they were old at age. And then with um, Skip, that was a murder. I don't care what no one's labeling it as. He was taken from us. And then as I was older, the one that really has changed me. And I don't, I'm not the same. I'm trying to be the same. When they took my nephew from me, it's a different story, guys. The death and the feelings that I felt for my my other loved one was nothing compared to this. It's like, I don't know. It, it took something from me, and I don't think that I'm going to ever get it back. Robert, yeah, day-to-day -day trials and tribulations. My heart goes out to you. When I see you, it's a joy to me because I see my nephew. I hate the fact that, you know, life is not dealing you right now. The cards, that would be some type of a royal flush or something like that. But we're here for you. I want you to know that. Please reach out. Um, I, it's, he was not my son, but he was my, he was my child. I'm sorry. I know that I didn't birth him and I didn't create him. But he was my child. I had three sons. And that's how I raised them. That's how they were brought up. So when they took him from us, they took a lot. And I miss my nephew to this day. So when you travel down your journey, Robert, with the holidays, birthdays, seasons changing, know that I'm right there with you. Every time one of the occasions come, or I'll put one better for you guys. There wasn't a Sunday that I knew I wasn't going to see my nephew until that Sunday that he was no longer with us. <laughs> so that too hurts. Every time I go to my mom's house on a Sunday and everyone's there, I think my nephew, if no one else was there, my nephew and his girlfriend was, was going to be there. So these are things that I deal with. My father's mm -hmm. passing. I was very disappointed because I struggled that last day and I sat in my car. And I remember everyone was talking about who's going up to see him, who's not going to go see him. And I remember I traveled from work that night and I was like, I'm just going to go and see him. So I parked my car and as I'm walking in to his room, the nurse is coming out. And he, she's like, are, are you his daughter? And I said, yes. And he's like, oh, I think he just took his last breath. And I felt real bad because I was like, I was coming. But I didn't get the chance to say goodbye. Yeah. So that broke me down as well. Um, there's days that I go to my father's gravesite and I just cry, and I cry, and I cry. And then when I leave, for some reason, I feel like I'm just blessed for the next next week. I don't know. I just feel blessed when I leave there and I just release it all. When I go to my nephew, my cry is a different cry. My cry is a cry of anger, mm -hmm. um, regret. Um, I just am confused. You know, I don't understand. And I'd be looking for an answer. And that's what I want to share with you guys. Mm -hmm. So before we go on, I, I said this before, and I want to um, reiterate this. So <clears throat> on daddy's last day, when you was... Uh, trying to find the strength to, to get there and, and deal with it. It's like certain individuals, and I was telling Patsy about this earlier before we started recording, you're on a death watch. 
And I don't know if that assignment is one that um it, it's it's not it's not something that I, I would wish on anybody because you have to deal with a lot and doing that and God bless anybody and everybody that's able to endure that. Um because a lot of times people want to make sure that person's passing their transition into the afterlife is uh it's not a lonely one like there's someone to see them on mm -hmm. um but i said it on that day and i'm gonna say it again if you receive such a blessing and you felt like you were supposed to be somewhere and you was not there to witness that passing consider yourself blessed because that also will add to your trauma it does. Probably it would have been more than you could. Um, it do. absolutely does add to the trauma because the fact that I had to pull the plug on my mom and didn't get to say bye. She was basically already brain dead by the time I got to the hospital. The machine was just keeping her alive. Uh huh. That's still hard to deal with. Yes. Yeah, that was like with my grandmother. The machine was keeping her alive. They done, they done put her into an uh, induced coma because she was being real. She didn't want to go under. And so they put her under and she never recovered from the shit. And I and, and then when we went to go see her, we watched her on the damn breathing machine. No brain activity. And so they had no choice but to damn pull the plug on it. Uh, same thing with, with my cousin Dennis. He, he was on the breathing machine. You know, I watch her. You know, sometimes how I feel with things like that, I, Sometimes I just like to remember people as they were living. And yes. then go to the hospital and see them take their last breath. I, I sometimes I just can't do that. I just can't do that. I got to I'd rather remember them who they are, you know, what they've done, what they what they uh and endure me with, you know, as far as information, things that they don't show, you know. So I, I keep all that into, you know, not, you know, going to see them take their last breath. I'd rather do that than go there, you know, because you know, sometimes that brings a lot of trauma to you. It brings a lot of trauma where, you know, sometimes people can't get, get through it. And a lot of people, especially black folks, they just don't think that they are capable of going to see psychiatrists. Like they, they so afraid that the psychiatrist is going to read them and is going to tell them things that they don't want to hear about themselves. So they don't want to go to the psychiatrist, you know, and, and so a lot of them deal with it however they can deal with it, you know, mm -hmm. the ones who, who really can't deal with it that, that well. They turn to the drugs or turn to drinking and whatnot. But I'm I'm a, I'm a big believer on when you know someone passes, you know it always brings your family together. And I just hate that it's like that when someone passes. And 
it's really a sign saying, you know, you take this time that you have with everybody, your your loved ones, and you enjoy those times because when they go, you can't get that damn time back that you lost by being mad, by oh, being I mean, having yeah. so petty arguments and whatnot. You know, all that that stuff plays comes into play when someone passes. You know, so for me, I'm I'm like all that I you know I I'm loving. I'm 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 loving about, you know, let's do let's do this, we gonna do it, let's do it. You know, I'm in. You know, that's what I'm about. Let's get if we're going to do things, let's do it and, and, and get it done and, and have a good time and enjoy each other's company. That's what I'm exactly. about. Because all that upper dumb shit is just petty. It's about to say. It ain't even working. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to, Josie and everybody else, I'm going to say this. Um, Again, go back to what I was uh, alluding to. God gives you what you can handle when it comes to these uh, situations. Uh, it, it's, it's again, it's not what you want. It's what he feels that you can handle. But your loved one that is making that transition, they're still trying to protect you. So even in that sense, let's just imagine that Daddy was full aware that you were on your way up there and you would have had to witness his passing. I, I feel like that he wanted to spare you of that. So he went ahead and made that transition so that you didn't have that to endure and so that you wasn't further uh Devastated. Uh, yeah. So don't feel no guilt. Um, let go, let God put those burdens upon the Lord because he and he alone made that decision. That's that's what I want to say to you. Uh, Kiana, you with us? Yep. All right, Duchess. Um, you got anything to share? You've endured on um, death. How did you deal with it? Um, how, yes, I have. How did I endure it? I mean, I, I, I'm very thankful that I have, I have, and had a relationship with God. To, um, I mean, I mean there's stuff that goes back many years, but I, I mean, as a child, both my grandfathers died before I was 10. Then my father's mother passed away on my birthday. I think it was 2007. Uh, then that was kind of tough with like I was preparing to go out and we had a good relationship when, you know, when I was a kid, she used to, we used to be bosom buddies to go on the uh, Peter Pan bus or the Greyhound bus down to Rhode Island every other weekend. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out, well, does she want me, would she want me to be sad or would she want me to enjoy my birthday? And I was like, she would want me to enjoy my birthday. And I went yeah. out and... I guess then I enjoyed my birthday. She wouldn't want me to sit there on the bed crying, upset. No. Um, so I enjoyed my birthday. So every year I I would I never I used to as a young teenager, middle aged person be sad about getting old. I celebrate my birthday. Mm -hmm. I celebrate my birthday for a month. This year I'm gonna celebrate for six months. Because I know <laughs> that 
both of them would have definitely said, enjoy yourself. My mother's mother passed away. That was probably the one of the hardest. That and my mother-in-law. Those were two hard ones. Those were more recent. Um, well, actually, my mother-in-law passed away a year before my father's mother passed away. So it was 2006, 2007. Those were pretty shitty years. I mean, they they more years were shittier beyond that, but those were like, yeah, 2020, 2015, that was another shitty year. That was when I almost <laughs> came close to death with my husband. Thank the Lord that didn't go the way it was that the devil wanted it to go. But that same year, my grandmother passed. And that was a real God tough one. It. Because I had to endure and take on all of the preparation that took for the funeral by myself. Didn't really have support. My mother fell apart. You know, people say, oh, people can't deal with death. Who the hell wants to deal with death? <laughs> like, who 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 goes in the face of, oh, yeah, put it all on me. I, I, I want that burden or I want to take on everybody else's stuff. But it's I also principle. say I'm grateful for that because I don't, I didn't have to deal with me until later on. Yeah. And so I had time to process it but I always say I'm grateful my grandmother no longer suffered the only thing I wish she made it to 80 she was 20 22 days short of her 80th birthday that's the only thing that makes me mad because uh -huh. she really wants to make it yeah mm -hmm. yeah my mother was like about a week before her her 60th so I understand what you're saying, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's that tough. was a tough one. And, um, you yeah. know, everything that the chips have, that have fallen since then have been sucky chips. And I don't know. The only thing I, I can say more grateful or that I had a breakdown is I think it was last year when she finally had a headstone. Hmm. Huh. You know, the more I hear people share, the, the more I learn that we have a lot of um, things in common. And they say uh, a lot of the things that are associated with death is uh, hmm, wills, trust funds, funerals, life insurance. That's like a lot of the things that- Where does the grief uh, come in at? Uh, it, it, it comes and goes like, for me, it, it just was like, it's always there, but sometimes it's dormant. Sometimes it hits you like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. You know, like that first year when someone passes, like, when my mother passed Quiet. away, those first half set of holidays, I mean, those were emotional for me. I might not show it outwardly, but in, inwardly, I, my heart was crying. I'm like, God, my mother's not here to share this. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I can't go to my mother's house and, um, have dinner with her. We can't celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays together, holidays. And seriously, like, um, a few days before she passed away, um, I had went to her house and there was a, um, cause she lived in Lynn at, at the time and she, there was a flower shop like a few blocks from her house before I got off the bus. 
I literally got off the bus and I called my mother. I was like, are you going to be home on uh, Valentine's Day? And she was she, she was like, yeah, and, and she was maybe like, why? And I told her I'm going to have some stuff okay. delivered to your mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. I bought her some flowers. Well, I bought her flowers. I bought her, my sister, and my brother, like a teddy bear and some stuff. Um, Some stuff from the flower shop, too. And, I, I you know, I paid for it. Then um had told them. The address and I walked up the house and stuff, but I'm so glad that I did that one act of kindness before she passed away, like four days later, literally. Mm. Well, a few, uh, like a few days after Valentine's. But sometimes when you do a kindness to somebody and you don't know they're going to pass. Mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff that you're going to remember that you know that they are going to appreciate it. And, you know, you keep those little memories of alive in your heart and your mind and be like, you know, mm -hmm. I love whoever it is that okay. passed on, your mother, your brother, you your you're always going to remember those kind acts you done did yeah, before they passed. Know. Mm -hmm. No matter how simple. Yeah, I I want to know okay. how you, how you deal with um when you lose people back to back to back because I lost my mom and then I lost my my one of my good friends. They say that death was, usually uh, comes in threes. Well, this 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 stuff came in fours, okay? Because I lost my mother. Then I lost my friend, my friend that was like my sister, Katrina. Then I lost my my spiritual mother. And then a, a year after, I'm going to say a year or two years after that, I lost my spiritual father. And that was devastating to me. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you pray on it. If you feel like you need to scream, cry, whatever it is you need to do, Call somebody up and be like, you know, I'm so angry. I'm so frustrated. If you got to call somebody up to vent about how you feeling in that moment, <clears throat> and whoever you think to call, call that person and be like, can, can I talk to you? I really need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And be like, okay, boom, boom, boom. If they can talk, but if they say, like, give me an hour. You know, and, and you just feel like you need to scream and cry until they, the time that they are able to talk to you, do whatever you got to do. If that person's not available, you call a couple of different people until you might be able to find somebody to talk to and just be like, boom, 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 I need to go have some coffee or can you come over here and blah, blah, blah. I need to get this shit out of my system. Mm -hmm. And find that, that support to be able to be like, you know what? I am angry. I'm, because all that stuff that you're feeling, the anger, the sadness, whatever it is that you're going through and you're just feeling like, ah, you just want to scream. If you got to go, just go out the door for a minute and just scream and be like, and People looking like looking at you like you got twenty heads. Let them look at you like you got twenty heads. They don't know what what you're going through. That's why they said sometimes you got to find yourself in the middle of a field where there's nobody around and just scream as loud as you can. Yeah. Yo, let let your your pain out, your frustration, your anger. And don't even feel embarrassed or nothing. If you got to do it, you know what you got to do. Why are you like, going through it? There's a lot that you're unloading. Um, yes. You say how do you get past losing so many people back to back? Well, December 12th, I lost my son. December 21st, I think on his funeral day, I lost my cousin, Moochie. 
um, two exact, exact months later, February 12th, I lost my daughter's mother. Mm. That was pain behind pain behind pain. Yes. How you get through it, and it's a two-month period of time, and three of your loved ones just is just wiped off the face of the earth, been called home or taken out your life. How I got through it, I don't even know. I I no. lost interest in all the things me and my son used to do, the walks we used to take. I vowed never to walk that direction, get my hair done up there, grocery shop up there, do nothing in these areas. Um, I didn't even want to cook the meals we cooked together in the kitchen. I didn't even want to watch some of the programs on TV. What this pain was so bad. I started just losing weight, losing weight, losing weight. And then I asked the Lord, because <clears throat> I got upset with him, honestly. If you ever loved me and I was your child, how could you put this pain upon my heart like you done? Um, I blamed him and and I was letting myself go. And I said, you know, this might be the easy way of just letting yourself go and not have to live anymore. So oh, I said to myself, well, if I don't eat and I don't do certain things, maybe God will let me come home. And then I started thinking, I have a daughter left here. Her whole world will be ended over me just leaving her like this now. So I have to try to get it together. I yeah. I, I, I even found myself I, get it together. I, I I even found myself so emotionally in the in the dumpster type feelings where yeah. I had to go up to the hospital and witness her mother's condition. And what really brought me around, yes, you know, to get it together, um I'm just broken up in pieces over I lost my son, my cousin's gone, and now now I mean, you're about to die and you was not only my daughter's mom, she was one of my best female friends I had. So, yes. so I'm sitting here in the hospital and so much pain and hurt watching you like this. And I remember myself crying and couldn't take it. And this lady, on her last days, she was able to turn to me and wipe my tears from my eyes and tell me I went to a good father I have been and I will continue to be. And I'm stronger than I think I am. And she know I'm going to be all right. But these are all the words and stuff I was feeling to say to you because I wanted you to still live. But you was able to comfort me on your weakest, weakest bed, your weakest day. How you get past it, the Lord came to me and told me, my time ain't done here on earth. He got right. so, so much more for me to do. And I am not yet done. So I believe in the things that he say. And I have a relationship with that man. So I live. I live. I live to see, you know, the work that he's believing that I can do here still. And that's yeah. what keeps me alive. Yeah, and that's why I said before, I would say God. my my mother wasn't a perfect mother, and but she was a good mother. That's what you have to reaffirm, like whoever it is that you're dealing with and passed on, you got to confirm in your, your own spirit in your head and say, you know, these people were not perfect people. But they were good people. They did the best that they could, that they knew how. And 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 try to keep positive affirmations in your head because it's not easy. And grief comes and goes. Because mm -hmm. I was telling David earlier, um, when it came up to, like, my mother's 20th anniversary, like, those holiday months just before, like, from the end of October or the beginning beginning of November, like I started thinking about my mom and thinking about like it's almost 20 years. 
I was grieving in my 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 high my spirit and everything. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really say nothing to, to my therapist afterwards. Well, look at you know, I had a process that taught it's 20 years now going on that she's passed away. Mm. Yeah, Wait, that's a long time. I didn't know that. Yeah, so when you're going through that grief, don't deny the grief and the process of the grieving. Just go through it and let it pass through you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to deny it or, or hide from it. Mm -hmm. Let it go through and pass and, and just pray about it, ask God to help you through it and stuff, you know. Because going through that kind of grief, no matter how many people passed on in one length of time, like two or three months in the process, you think about it, you you grieve it, you 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 say, you know, you tell them like like in your head and say like you know I love you you have that conversation you know even if they you know they're not physically there but you're just kind of like in your head saying you know I love you I miss you mm -hmm. whoever it is like I feel this way about you I hate that you passed on mm -hmm. but you go through that grief and you allow yourself to feel that pain don't deny it when that pain passes through you. Then, you know, you continue and you always remember all those good memories that happen and yet the laughter, the, you know, you, you went through all whatever trauma you went through with when they were living and you argue. Those arguments don't mean crap, but you'll be like, damn, that's some shit, you know, but then sometimes you end up thinking about it, and then you're laughing about, like, man, what the hell were we thinking out here about toilet paper mm -hmm. or the changing the cat little box or whatever it is that y'all were arguing about? That shit was so stupid. It's funny now, you know? Mm -hmm. So you remember that shit, but you, you, you laugh about it. You have those good memories that you also laugh about. Just allow yourself to feel the pain. Let's let's stay there for a moment. Everybody pause for a moment. Uh Gregory, are you still with us? Yes, sir. All right. So as Patsy was saying, he needs some laughter. So let's laugh a bit. Participants left for an eighth grade for end. Try something new, Homer. What'll it hurt you, Homer? I never heard of a poison pork chop. <laughs> um, your wife agreed that I should break this to you. No need, Doc. I can read Marge like a book. <gasps> oh, it's good news, isn't it? No, Mr. Simpson. No. If, in fact, you've consumed the venom of the blowfish, and from what the chef has told me, it's quite probable. You have 24 hours to live. 24 hours? Well, 22. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long. Oh, Mark, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> well, if there's one consolation, it's that you'll feel no pain at all until sometime tomorrow evening when your heart suddenly explodes. <laughs> now, a little death anxiety is normal. Uh, you can expect to go through five stages. The first is denial. No way, because I'm not dying. Second is anger. Why, you little duck, you little... After that comes fear. What's after fear? What's after fear? Bargaining. Doc, you got to get me out of this. I'll make it worth your while. And finally... Acceptance. Well, we all gotta go jump time. Mr. Simpson, your progress astounds me. I, I should leave you two alone. Uh, perhaps this pamphlet will be helpful. So you're going to die. Uh. Mm. Well, now we know the um, five, five stages, stages. Of, of grief. Um, uh, what were they? Denial, anger, fear, bargaining and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And let's go and add a sixth one in there. Revenge. 
Yes. Because unfortunately, both the person that is that receives the death sentence that's on their way out and the survivors, their loved ones, for some dark reason, revenge always seems to pop its ugly head up and insert itself into the equation. So that's the demon that was planted before the person had passed on. That may be a wicked spirit. And for some reason, it takes hold of the best. Of Elaborate. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to say this. When my dad passed away, it did not bring out the best um, in everybody. It was a very tumultuous situation. I mean, there was a lot of... Um, Dispute, uh, untruths. There were some nasty things said and felt about family members. There was constant, um, like uh, arguing, debates, even all about his about his uh final wishes and everything. Uh, the funeral. It was. It, it, it was a task. It, um, when 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 I got there after um dealing with my own obstacles on that day, because the the devil was hard at work. There was a lot of situations that happened beforehand. I am seldom late for anything, and on this day, I was. Now I received several calls while I was preparing to uh, say my goodbyes to our father. Everybody was inquiring as to my whereabouts. Uh, somebody even questioned if I was going to show up. Don't know why, but they did. When I finally got there, um, <laughs> it, it, it was palpable. The tension was palpable. You can cut it with a knife. It, it was it was it was very bad. I could feel it when I walked in. I gotta tell you, I did not feel the love in that room. And if we was all gathered to say goodbye to someone that we loved and held near and dear, I did not understand why there was such hate and disdain in the um atmosphere. It was it was very bad. But, I understood what it was. You but when, might not have, but I did. I already knew about it. So let's not turn this into something. To my last respect and get the hell out of Dodge, get the hell away from your people. The bad energy. I don't like the energy. So I'm, I pay my respect to get the hell away from you. That's it. So, as Kiana was saying earlier, I can. um. I can identify, I can relate to um, what she's talking about. You don't want to deal with the death. You don't no. want to be the responsible one at that moment and stuff like that. You don't want none of that, none of that. So I wanted to just abandon all of that, just give it up to someone else to do. But I felt like if I did take that approach then, nothing good will come of this uh, situation. So needless to say, when I arrived, I was uh, ushered to the front and spoke to the uh, to the congregation, the people, the family, everybody that did attend the funeral. And, you know, I prayed on it briefly. Well, actually, I already talked to God beforehand, before coming there. Uh, I asked him to guide my thoughts and my tongue. So when I was there, when I got there, I, I thought I knew what I was going to say, you know, already. But when, like I said, when I got in there and I felt that tension, it was like your best laid plans. It just went out the window. So I, I God called an audible, basically. And 
you know, it was like, all right, well, this ain't script. So I'm going to shoot from the hip. So whatever I said, it penetrated the, the walls that people erected beforehand and during. And I, and, and, I, and I dare say that some of those walls are still standing, uh, depending on who you talk to. But uh -huh. uh, for the moment, everybody was able to come together uh, at my behest. You know, come together. Everybody right was able now. to acknowledge uh, to Baru. my father's uh, legacy. Everybody understood the assignment. People actually, it, it, sad to say, it was like the, um, the Democrats and the Republicans, they like crossed the aisle to acknowledge one another, but they did it. And after that, I felt like I don't want my no job was done. I felt like my job was done at that point. So then I felt like that I could have my moment to cry. So I actually went outside and uh, I, I broke down on on then. And then after I I did, it, it it's 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 funny because when I looked up, Bird was standing there. Now my babies was there, my daughters were standing there too. But Bird was standing there, and he said to me, "You finished?" He was like. Let it out, let let it go, and you know I I did I cried and I got it out my system, and then in his wittiness he was like, "Now dry your tears and let's take a picture," and and that was it, and then we moved on. There was a repass, but we passed on the repass, and we went to my mom's house where everybody uh felt at peace, and that's how we celebrated our dad's life and how we said goodbye. That's how we acknowledged the, uh, the, the, the transition, his, uh, his passing. But um, yeah, that, that, that revenge factor, I felt like that, that's why I said add that in there, because I felt like that people waited until my dad's my dad was at his worst to uh, basically insert and enact their um their 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 revenge on 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 my family, and 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 I wasn't happy about it to say the least. But it was like my dad instructed uh my family, our family beforehand. He didn't want there to be no fighting. So I felt like that in order to honor him, that I should and everybody else should uh, basically heed his final, you know, words and wishes. But who would you be fighting on? Who would you be fighting about? There was a lot you of know, there was a lot of national. You know, there was a lot, there was of, a lot of people that needed to be put in a headlock. There they was, already dropped what they was going to get, what they wanted. The uncle done back and put the move and truck. And to that and lady in the house that act like she didn't know who I, 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 I Don't do it. Yeah, he, yeah you know he's a thief. He came back and tried to move uh, the truck. The we're move talking about it. Pause for a moment. Pause for a moment. Y'all taking it a whole different direction. Yeah. Um, uh, Tanya, did you ever experience any situation during any of those times where you um you dealt with death that people became you know vultures? Yeah, yeah. When my mother passed, and how did you deal with it? People was calling me and asking me, "Can um, can I have this?" I'm I'm like, and I was sick at the mind you, I was sick in the wheelchair. <coughs> If it wasn't if it wasn't for my husband telling people to, you know, just leave me alone, asking for my mother's car, asking for this, asking for that. And it's like, look, give me a moment to breathe here. I'm grieving my mother. All you caring about is what you can come in here and take. Yeah. 
the material stuff. That's, that's, what, that's what people do. They wait to come up off the people's death. And they're not caring about your feelings or your grieving. They want whatever that person left because they've been wanting it for a long time. Mm. What about you, uh, Gregory? Did you experience any situation during any of uh, the deaths that you had to endure, deal with? Did you uh, think people acted badly? Did they enacted some type of revenge? Um, I was just on my way to saying it. And to that lady in the house that didn't act, she wanted to act like she didn't know who I was. But I was the grandchild. And then I found out that she was just a terrible person. She was just a terrible person. And she was only out for whatever she can get out of my grandfather's death. Mm. Sad, 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 sad. And we need not, not to like, mention that's her best friend. That was her best friend. And we need not like uh give those individuals any glory, any any spotlight. Um so don't say that. Let them remain. Gone. Let them remain nameless in this situation. Uh, how about you, Robert? Um, I didn't pay too much attention to um what they was doing at Daddy's because at my son's funeral, God showed me a different way how people act at funerals. And I've never seen that before. I I I I really see I was like I was there but I wasn't there. I mean to compare my son's funeral, how people treated me, um it was totally different than my father's funeral. My father's He's funeral right, the the evil or the wickedness. At my yeah, son's right. funeral I I never thought, you know, people would, they was very kind. I got envelopes on top of envelopes of, of cards praying for me, saying kind words, and filled with money. I haven't been to a funeral like that before that. Every time I turned around, somebody slipped the envelope of money inside my suit jacket or placed it in my hand or laid it in front of me on my table. Not only for me, my table, That's I used to table was filled with money and envelopes. And everybody That's came out and they gave mad money on that day. And I never that seen them like that. From, that was the love from the, your family, friends, and shit. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. You know, well, and, there was and I agree along with you about that, that. I was checked out. I was just ready to get the hell out of there. I was like, I I really didn't want to go because of the shenanigans. I only went on the strength to, you know, pay my respect to the old man and whatnot. And that's what I did. But no way, shape, or form was I are uh, going to interact or or feel like these people, because even the uncle that did come around started acting funny. You know, so I'm like, you know, I, I know where this going. This been in the works since, since he got with my mother and shit. So it ain't, it ain't nothing to me. To, to cut that off, mm. you know, I really didn't have no relationship with that family, but the uncles, the ones that came around, but if they want to act funny, then, hey, they gone too. I, I ain't losing no sleep over that. Hey, man, don't be including so, my uncles in this. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Let me get some other people on the panel. Um, is Josie still with us? Somebody does. Uh, all right. Um, Kiana, you still with us? Yep. All right. So through your ordeal, did you experience any people trying to enact any type of revenge? And let me just go ahead and say beforehand, I know you were no nonsense, but did you 
Uh, did, did, did you peek any of that? Did you glimpse any of that? Or did it didn't even have to be at your own um, with your family? Did you witness it at other people's funerals? <coughs> well, no, not no, not at anybody's funeral or, or anything. I mean, I witnessed people being um, greedy after the fact. Mm -hmm. Um, and I won't breathe life into the people who are that they'll get they'll get their day when they meet their maker um but me me personally nah you know I don't I don't I don't tolerate that and I will tell you I don't care if we in a church we at home we I I think a lot of people know how I am so they wouldn't try that um so no, I didn't. But I, again, I I witnessed some greediness after the fact with mm -hmm. with certain people, and and um, they're just lucky that I can't do what I want to do because they're not my people, so I don't have to deal with them like that. <laughs> uh, right, God bless them. But Lord knows when the time comes, people who don't really know me will know me. And they're going to be sorry exactly. that they haven't learned that me. Mm -hmm. If they ever come at me with the BS that they try to pull on other people. And that's all I'm going to say. All right. So before we move on, let me go ahead <laughs> and, and, and ask this question. So we, we, we talk about some of the things that equated with our death. Um, yeah. Will... David, can I answer that question? Go ahead, Patsy. Um, um, yeah. Because there was this particular person mm -hmm. that was related to my mother that before, because like this particular person did not get along with my mother from, from when they were kids, mm. right? So when I first found out my mother passed away, my grandmother had ended up in the hospital and and asked me about cremation. I said I needed to talk to Gina, and my sister and brother. And so, like, uh, at one point, the funeral director asked me, had called and said, like, if uh, we needed to make plans for around where she lived, right? Go ahead and call them back. So, um, but I had... Guy, John's my brother's godmother was like, "Well, so and so wanted you to call them at this other person's house." So I called them after I talked to the funeral director, and, and this particular person said, "If my mother is not cremated, she will not be buried in the family plot." Mm. Now, she was like thinking because like I'm I'm the type of person that kind of like kind of like obedient to my authority. Where given the fact that my mother passed away, I'm gonna honor my mother before anything because I already had a conversation. I don't care, like with my siblings, and I say I don't care about. Who says what? The two people that I'm going to consider my mother and my grandmother, but ultimately it'll be my mother's last wishes. And when this um, bird head said what she said to me about my mother being cremated, and if not, she's not being buried in the family flight. I called the funeral, because like at first I, I was wondering why this man called and said what he said. And after talking to this relative, this knucklehead, I understood why he said what he said. I called him back and it's like, okay, and we had a conversation. So this is like before we even buried my mother. I'm like, ah, oh, no. And then they didn't even show up 
um, her and some other relatives did not show up, did not send flowers, did not do diddly squat to help prepare for my mother's funeral. And I, I'm like, Kiana, I did most of the footwork. My sister and brother did their part, but as far as dealing with the funeral home, I did that more than they did, you know? Mm -hmm. But they did do their part, but that was my shenanigan situation. No, and that was truly a story of revenge, deeply seated uh, hate. And and that's what I mean. You get people that they 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 believe that they're um getting revenge on the individual, but they're actually also trying to uh manipulate me because like I am my mother's child. Yep, yeah, and, and and they try to uh enact their revenge on on this on the children um as well. So let's go back yeah. to this um thing because I want to cover this before we end. So um talk about uh people's final wishes and stuff like that. So a will, some people have a trust fund, uh, uh, people planning for their funerals and stuff like that, people planning for the repast, people are talking about uh, death proceedings, how they want to be, um, uh, how they want to make the transition. Some people cremation, some people burial and stuff like that. But, and I want to touch this briefly, um, a lot of times, that the, the discussion that gets avoided is uh, life insurance. So um, how do you deal with that in that situation? How do you present that to uh, the family when it comes time to have uh, said discussions about life insurance? Uh, is there certain like uh, expectations one would have uh, for the policy owner, meaning the person that's um, paying on the policy, usually is the person that's, um, that's going to pass away, or, or it can also be someone else that owns their own um, policy, and the uh, beneficiaries, as well as the uh, funeral uh, home uh, owners. So, Tanya, uh, two part question. And uh -huh. Everybody be brief but brilliant. Um, when you had to head up uh, these death proceedings, these burial, um, those discussions of the, the ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, did you did the individual have uh, life insurance? And the second part, have you put your last wishes into uh, words? Have you documented it? And do you have life insurance? Yes, my mother, um, we tried to talk about it, but she passed before, but she had life insurance. And uh, and so my cousin, because of um, the state that I was in, she helped me with the, put the funeral and stuff together. Um, part two of that question, I've talked about it, but I haven't put it, put it in writing, and I do have life insurance. Beautiful, beautiful. It's the best decision that you can make for your family, the people that you um that you protect and nurture and and life and support. That's to ease the um any burden that may come about um in your passing. Um, it's 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 always good to put it in writing because uh again people behave badly um, in the end. And a lot of times they do not um, they do not do what you want them to do, what you would have them do. Patsy, same question. Uh, did your loved ones have life insurance? And um, do you have life insurance? No, she didn't have life insurance and um, I actually have to go get some, figure that out and put everything in writing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, I don't have it myself yet. Um, I would implore you to have a conversation about that, like, as soon as possible. 
not saying that you plan on checking out any day anytime soon, but right. you know, you, you want to put those things in place just in case you have an untimely uh passing. Um let's go to Timmy next. Uh did the people did um die and that you witnessed their funerals and stuff like that? Did they have life insurance? And do you currently have life insurance? Be brief or brilliant. Okay, we're gonna move on. Gregory, same question. Um, did the people that you um some people did some people didn't, and I never really thought about getting life insurance because I feel like I'm still young, but I guess it is really a good idea to have that in the back of your mind, just knowing that anything could happen and it's possible. So but right. I, I haven't been looking forward to it, so I haven't looked into that type of stuff. So again, I would for you to uh, put that in the forefront of your mind as opposed to the back because it's a conversation that you um you should have and sooner than later. Um who else we got left? Uh Robert. Um some of them did and some of them did not. Me myself, I'm about to open up one for myself, my daughter and my mom's. Um is this something that I've been discussing lately more you know, yeah. more and more with different mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's about to be done. Um, I'm I'm just just another bill I'll be paying for all the right reasons. So yeah, like, it's the way to think about it. That's the uh, that's that's the mature thing to do and practical thing to do. Um, who else we got left? Gina, you still with us? She stepped away. All right. So let's, Kiana, I think you're the last yeah. one. Um, I'm here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Almost every one of them had life insurance. I have life insurance. I've had life insurance since I was 25 years old. So, um, and my, my because I was a parent, so of course I wasn't going to ever leave my child with the burden of having to take care of me, and he has life insurance since he was six. So, um, yeah, so everybody has life insurance. The only thing I haven't d done is put my wishes in writing, but everybody who knows who has the ability to do something knows exactly what I want, and there's only two people. Yeah, and I think that um, there's one more person who's speaking right now. I believe you have told me certain things. <laughs> so, um, I would say this in advance to those individuals, hell has no fury like a woman scorned, and um, you don't want to feel those uh, fiery flames. Um, so do as you can instruct it yep. to do. Yeah, that, that's 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 my um that's that's my warning, my advance warning for you individuals, like I said, that have been elected <laughs> to do uh, certain things as as it pertains to Kiana's final wishes. Um, so again, I I practice what I preach. Yes, I do have um life insurance. Um. It's not something, it's not a conversation that anyone wants to have because a lot of people feel like you're discussing your own death, um, you're, you're paying into your, your death. Um, but it's a conversation that is needed. And again, that documentation, you, you need to document uh, your final wishes and stuff like that because you do- Can I add something on to that, what you're saying? Sure. I think that people shouldn't look at it as- uh, morbid or whatever it's a continuation of your life how you want the people you leave behind to live mm -hmm. do you want them to be burdened by uh 
by payments that they shouldn't have to even worry about. They're already dealing with grief. Now they have to deal with finances. Mm -hmm. So I think you exactly. should change the narrative on that. And I also think that the people in the um the death business, mm -hmm. some of them better mock their days because when they go to hell, they're gonna be burning for a long time with oh, gasoline oh, drawers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's some well, you know, I, I want to add on to something with reference to that. The funeral people that we dealt with with my mom's passing, mm -hmm. they were beautiful people. They really worked with us. Because let me tell you, when it came down to like, um, I went there every month to I I, I agreed to, to after we buried her and everything that I would pay X amount of, mm -hmm. X amount of money every month, right? Mm -hmm. And we hadn't gotten my mother of a headstone, right? Mm -hmm. And September, I mean like literally the day before my birthday, I went out there. And to give them the money that I agreed upon. And the guy that answered the door, he was like, well, the funeral director wanted to talk to you. I'm like, okay. And he placed me in the office. He went in, down and got the the funeral director. The guy came up, said, um, we had a meeting yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the money that you did give us. Mm -hmm. We're going to take that, dismiss like every, like the whole case. So they took whatever money that was given to him by me mm -hmm. and my siblings. Um, they, and then he said, we're going to pay for your mother's headstone because we literally couldn't afford it. And I'm, I mean, my mouth dropped my heart dropped, I was shot. And these are people that are strangers to, to me. Now see, my mother's family didn't do, diddly squad didn't offer nothing like what this man mm -hmm. and his staff had offered and did. He, they did this out of the kindness of their heart. And I was shocked. I was surprised when they took me to the stone people, to, to the um the people that does the um headstones and, and whatever, right? And I picked out a um a, a thing to put on the headstone. I say if I asked them if I show this to my sister and brother, and they don't agree with what I want. Mm -hmm. I think that, can I call back and change it? They was like, sure, just call the number. Here you go. Here's a pamphlet. I showed my siblings, and they was like, well, we like this one better. Mm -hmm. And so I called in. Well, I mean, do you know how like shocking and surprised I was and the people that are strangers that are not even family will love on you more than people that are that are actually blood related and don't even give a who. Mm. But me and my sister my siblings, my sister brother and I stuck with each other, we agreed with each other, we worked with each other, we stuck to the game plan that we stuck with and on my mother and we was like, forget whoever doesn't um want to be like supportive. They don't want to do that, fine, it's on them. But we got blessed with these people mm -hmm. and doing what they did. They mm -hmm. didn't have to do this, mind you. They were strangers to us, but they loved on us better than our own family. Love My it. mother's siblings and and their husbands. Love it. Love it. You um, know. On that note, 
I'm gonna say that's a happy ending. Let me just end yes. with this. Um, so you can't have life without death. You can't have death without life. The sun is a symbol of life. So the sunrise ushers in a new day. day. The sunset ushers in the end of the day. It, it's, it's a representation of the end. So sunrise is life, sunset is death. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.